you know, as much as you think you know the cost, you don't know it till you're living it, and you go, wow, this is, this is hard and painful. Having, having children's issues, having kids run away out of your home, having crazy stuff happen, um, the, the parenting and the working through that. But then what I was probably even less prepared for is the external criticism. So, you know, it's not normally, sometimes people are like, Greg, what you and Greg do is so wonderful. But a lot of times what I'm feeling is the, well, people are judging us or people are looking at our kids. So here I am, a counselor. I write and talk about these things. And I have children darting out of our house and crazy things happening. And if you had it all together, your kids wouldn't leave kind of a thing. And that is that goes back to the issue of transparency. Mm -hmm. And I hear this in the counseling realm a lot of parents just afraid to be honest that they're struggling because we're not transparent people. We don't want people to see. And as a foster parent, there are so many foster parents that feel that way. We're judged. We're not, it's not that people think we're wonderful people. And people do things for the right reasons and wrong reasons all the time. But I think there are many a foster parent who would say, we feel like the church kind of puts us off to the side because they don't know what to do with us, the church at large. And Greg and I are lucky. We have people who love us. We have a community of close friends and peers at CCF and work who are wonderful to us, but our experience at the church of large has been, well, look at how your kids are acting. So there, there must be something wrong with you mm -hmm. because surely a, a good kid wouldn't act this way. Or surely if you're parenting well, right. your kids wouldn't be doing this. And Okay. I need to speak to this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because <clears throat> I think there's a, a lot of misunderstanding about the task of parenting. And I think it's, led to hurt, angry, defeated, defensive parents. And it is that my work as a parent is judged by the older life choices of my child. And that is positively not true. Because here's the spiritual reality. No matter how righteously I act toward my children, if they don't transact with God, they won't be okay. Mm. And I can't do that transaction. I just can't. I have no ability to reach in to the chest of my child and alter their heart. I, I cannot do that. I should be an instrument. I should accept that ambassador calling. I should exercise authority in a way that's a beautiful picture of the authority of God. All those things I should be doing. I should uh, give grace where grace is needed. There's so much that we could say about that, but ultimately, I can't create the change that needs to take place. That's why I titled my one book, Instruments in the Redeemer's Hands. I'm never anything more than God's tool. Uh, righteous Hezekiah had a son by the name of Manasseh. Evil. It's just... It's that helplessness that you have to embrace. You, if you're going to have hope as a parent, you have to embrace your helplessness, mm -hmm. that you can't create that change. I know parents right now that Llewellyn and I are talking to that tend to load the entire burden of the welfare of their family on their shoulders every morning. It's like putting 50-pound rocks in a in a book bag and they're laying in bed looking at that backpack thinking oh, I gotta face another day and there's no God in the picture it's I've got to produce what needs to be produced and you just don't now that means a couple things it means that I I'm always humbly affirming that what needs to happen in my child's life the most important things that need to happen I can't create I got to be a, I want to be a good instrument. But change is an act of grace. But it means another thing, the Christian community must stop the judgment. Mm -hmm. Because it's just not true. It's not right. Godly loving good parents weep over the conditions of their adult children yeah. and are wonder why this child could come out of this home. Tim Keller said something to me. We were in Taiwan doing a conference together, and he looked at me. I was about 
to go up and speak on parenting. He said, I'll never write a parenting book. <laughs> he said, he's, I, he's, I think that Kathy and I were just like, oh, we probably weren't lousy parents, but we really didn't know what they were doing. And we have great kids. And I know, he said, I know parents I just think are noble parents who have messed up children. Yeah. So I got up and I introduced myself by saying, I had this conversation with Tim just now. I've written two parenting books. What's a matter with me? 